enhance. Enhance. Oh, hey. I'm trying to do some updates to my uh, Link Roaster, and unfortunately, I don't think this is how you do it. So, um, why don't we learn how to enhance our Link Roaster with the Link Studio software together. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, your captain speaking. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Captain's Call. I'm David, and as promised, today we're diving deeper into the Link. Specifically, we're going to be talking about its software component, Link Studio. And this is where you can really unlock the full potential of the Link Roasting system. We'll go over the basics, as well as editing profiles, custom designing profiles, and how to share your profiles. And all that will set us up for converting profiles to handle 200 gram batches. Now, speaking of which, I originally was going to release this video and the 200 gram video as one since the two topics flow together so well, but that video was gonna be over an hour long. So we're splitting it up for easy reference. But enough chit chat, let's dig in. Unless I placed an ad up next, in which case I'm sure you'll hear me talk all about how we have this home roasting supply store, thecaptainscoffee.com. You can buy roasters, green coffee. We really appreciate your likes, subscribes, your comments, and um, Oh, I guess that was kind of the ad read. Yikes. Kind of messed that one up. First order of business, we need to make sure we have the studio software downloaded. And so you need to go to nucleuscoffeetools.com and you can just click learn more here on the link to go to the links page and click downloads. And here you can choose to download the Mac version of the studio software or Windows. And once you've downloaded the appropriate file, go ahead and install on your computer and uh, head on back and we'll talk some more. All right, so you've got the software downloaded and installed. Next thing to do is open it up. And what will pop up every time the first time is these tool tips. You can, of course, uncheck this box to keep them from popping up, but I'm not gonna cover everything in here, just the basics that I think are important. So feel free to peruse these when you've got some time. I'm sure there's a few things that are useful in here that I've left out. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to options and general options. And you're gonna wanna change a few things here. Um, if you're like me and you're more comfortable with Fahrenheit, be sure to change that here. If you are more comfortable with Celsius, you can leave it as the default. And you can change the positions of certain things like this legend and these tabs here and customize the name, the names of the phases if you like. I know for instance, some folks refer to this phase as browning or caramelization rather than Maillard. And the most important thing otherwise here is gonna be the location of your sync folder. This is the folder your roaster is looking for every time you connect it to your computer uh, so that it can sync any logs that it's recorded while you weren't connected to your computer and make sure to back those up. So this is where you can change that or uh, remember where it is if you forget. Uh, speaking of syncing, let's go ahead and show what happens when you do that. I've got my roaster connected. I just need to turn it on. And you can see right here, it has automatically begun to sync. Uh, and if, you're, uh, if your roaster's uh, getting a little full on logs, you will get this warning uh, to move some of the logs to a different folder to free up space in your sync folder. Uh, you can still, of course, load logs from anywhere on your computer or any external drive or anything like that, but you may want to move a few out from time to time to make sure they don't get overwritten. You will get that warning though, just in case. Uh, so click this button here to view the logs that's on your roaster, as well as um, all of the default profiles all of the profile packs here. And uh, what you're really gonna worry about the first time you connect to the studio software is the firmware. You want to go ahead and update the firmware on your roaster right away before you even start roasting because the profile packs will not be there otherwise. Uh, you can see I'm on version three now. Version zero that most roasters uh, ship with will not have any of these profile packs. And this is also where you can um, load uh, an exact profile straight to your roaster or view it or customize 
it to your liking, uh, which of course we're going to talk more about later. Uh, but to do that, you just select the pack you want to pull from. Um, you can go down to the default pack if you, or default profile of that pack if you like, or the specific curve that you're looking for, say that one, and then click this button right here, and it will load it to the studio software for you to customize, as well as loading it directly onto the roaster. And all you would have to do at this point is hit play to roast this curve. All right, next let's kind of get into the nitty gritty of adjusting, building your own curves, customizing curves. Uh, fairly straightforward, each one of these points, uh, you can click and drag and move and adjust you want to change the shape of the curve, may make it steeper. Uh, you can also grab these endpoints here and change the shape even more and some really wild stuff if you want. Say if you wanted this to kind of level out um, and it will give you a recommended uh, level of development to stop at as well as a, uh, a predictive first crack line here based on the profile you happen to have opened. Um, and of course, if you don't like anything you've done, you can just click undo under edit or control Z if you're on windows and just go back and get rid of anything. If you happen to go a little wild with it, uh, you can also use the draw function to insert new points like this, which you can drag around, um, and move. And as you'll notice, the ROR is predictive. You can't adjust the ROR because as we know from roasting, ROR is a derivative of the roast curve. So it is simply predicting uh, what the ROR will be and how it will behave. Um, so it's really interesting to see how that has changed as we adjust the shape of the roast curve. And of course, uh, you can delete points here. When one is selected, just click delete. As well as smooth a point. Say you've done some crazy drawing to something and you wanna smooth it out, it will do that for you uh, based on the shape of the curve so far, which is nice. Um, you can also select a point and set the exact temperature down here, um, as well as the time. So this is a great way to be very precise. I want it to be at this temperature at this time. I could simply type that in and type the time in and it will move the point exactly there and I can adjust the shape around that. And again, I'm customizing one of Sam's here. Um, you can also just start with the default and uh, if you just wanted to start from ground zero, just click through and delete all of the points using the uh, delete function and uh, set the beginning wherever you thought room temperature would be and then your end point and draw everything in between. So, you know, the possibilities here are pretty endless. Next up, let's talk about the fan profile curve. Now this is the uh, really what separates uh, air roasters from drum roasters on a, on a mechanical and fundamental level. Um, as you can see, these are RPMs uh, on the fan here. Uh, the RPM speed times 10. Uh, this is actually, so if that's 1500, this is actually 15,000 RPMs, um, but they've shortened to zero to uh, keep the numbers a little more manageable. Uh, but do keep in mind, it's actually 15,000, not 1,500 um, RPMs. And along the bottom, you'll see the time of the roast progressing. And a pretty general rule of thumb with air roasting is you want uh, your fan to start high when the beans are dense and heavy and uh, decrease because you need uh, a lot of fan power early on to move that mass of beans. And then you need less as the roast goes on. And this allows your heater to be more efficient as well, because with less air running over the beans, uh, the heat is retained and absorbed easier by the beans. Um, so this would be sort of a more advanced thing to fool with, but um, you can have all these same ideas here as you do with the bean curve. Say if you just wanted to try a linear, a more linear fan reduction, you can do that here. Uh, and the draw functions work the same way. Uh, smoothing the points out. And again, you can type in the exact RPMs you want at exactly what time, and it will move the point there. You can add new points. Um, so this can be a fun thing to play around with 
if you want to see how a change in fan speed um, can play with the roast over time, especially um, with the PID, it kind of takes care of a lot of it for you, uh, but it can be a lot less efficient. And this can uh, uh, change the dynamics of the beans, the environment um, during the roast. All right, next under about this file, uh, this is where all of the descriptions and uh, the name and everything. Now, obviously you wanna change this um, if you are customizing or editing one of Sam's files, we'll just say uh, 204 example, and we'll change this to your name, and then you can change this description, you know, uh, video example. Uh, because you don't want to save over anything and you want to make sure you keep good notes so you know what you tried and what worked and what didn't. Um, there, And it will tell you, if you try to save it, it will tell you what will show up on your roaster's display. Um, so that is largely what that profile short name is for. This is what you will see on the front of your roaster while it's roasting. So make sure to change that if you have edited anything and uh, save it under a different profile. You don't want to overwrite anything, so take care there. And finally, we get into the real nitty gritty, the profile settings. Um, this is where you can change every little teeny tiny thing um, that hasn't already been adjusted. Um, and the way you access more of these options here is through the options menu, difficulty. You can see I've got it on basic, uh, sort of like training wheels, uh, safety bumpers, on the bowling alley uh, to keep you from really um, changing anything that might have, you know, huge impacts on the roaster. Um, but you can, the more that you open up here, the more options you can see you get. Um, now, I like the way that they've done this. There are lots of little safeties in place. If I change something and I try to save this file and it is sort of out of spec, mechanically to what the roaster can do. It will pop up with a warning. Um, so there are lots of, of safeties and warnings in place to keep you from, um, you know, doing any critical harm to the system. And there's tool tips on every single one of these options that explain exactly what they do. And, and a lot of them are really granular. Some of them are really critically important. So for instance, uh, if it is critically important, you'll see notes like this, um, you probably don't want to mess with that, um, you know, but it, it's it's really interesting to learn some of the nitty gritty in here and you can really get some granular control over the roast and the PID system, but uh, certainly not necessary to get um, quite a lot out of the roaster. So don't be intimidated by these things. You don't need to mess with them if you don't want to by any stretch. And so finally, we're going to make sure that we uh, save when we're done. And uh, we can just hit save. And of course it will remind me what that profile name is. And I can save it to my sync folder under whatever I want. And uh, you can also access that by clicking save to roaster. And it will also save it directly onto your roaster's uh, sync folder. And you can access it there under your user profiles. All right, the last thing I wanted to touch on here is importing, exporting um, files from different sources like Artisan or uh, from Cafe Logic users, things like that. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. You would want to come down here uh, to file and go to import, and you could import any of those type of files. Uh, say, for instance, I wanted to open up one of my uh, Artisan profiles from my SR800 and I could choose how I'd like it to be converted. Uh, we'll just go with the default settings here, and you can see that it pulls in the curve here. And if I wanted to then convert this into a profile that I could load uh, as a user profile onto my link, I would just go to File and Extract Profile from Log. From there, I could load it into my link um, by saving to Roaster, um, saving it along with my user profiles, I could uh, modify it, adjust the curve just like we did here. Uh, so that's a really cool 
feature. Uh, and of course, same with Cafe Logic. Now, unfortunately, you cannot export as a Cafe Logic file. Uh, you can only import them. And unfortunately, they use a proprietary software for the uh, Nucleus link uh, that saves profiles as .inpro files. And um, I've tried it. You cannot open them on the Cafe Logic Studio. Um, and of course, you can see you, it's it's obvious to anyone pretty quickly that they share these two softwares share a lot of the same architecture and coding. Um, but the actual profiles, I can't import any nucleus link files here, unfortunately. So, you know, that's kind of a bummer, but there are certainly ways around it. Um, you could, uh, send a cafe logic user, your settings, um, certain points within the curve, um, any fan profile curve points, uh, they would just need the times and the speed as well as any profile settings changes that you had made. And you can send someone a custom link profile to their cafe logic, and it should be able to run it just fine. Um, and they'll just type it in themselves on the cafe logic studio and save it. Uh, so a bit of a workaround, um, you know, it'd be nice at some point if they decided to, uh, be able to share profile file types. Um, but until then, uh, you know, for instance, we can only export in PDF right now. I'm hoping they'll also add a feature to export as an artisan file. That'd be pretty cool. But till then, yeah, that's what we've got. And there you have it, folks, how to use the Link Studio software. Again, in our next video, we will dive deeper into Link Studio and talk about converting profiles for 200 gram batches. So stay tuned by hitting that subscribe button. And while you're down there, just go ahead and tap the like button too. I wouldn't want it to feel left out. Of course, don't forget to visit us at thecaptainscoffee.com for all your home roasting needs. Until next time, thanks for watching. Roast them if you got them.